Welcome to Within You, the podcast. This is where we explore the unknown space, the liminal space, the space that's between what's right here, right now, and what's next. Yo soy Viviana Carrasco. I call myself a wisdom teacher and a mindset mentor, and I serve as a transformational guide, which is my favorite thing to do. I am based right here in Fort Worth, Texas, which I am so happy to be about. It is also called Funky Town in my experience. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you for welcoming me back into your ear. I'm so happy that we're friends if you have just found me somehow magically by the interwebs. I'd love to know how we met. How did we bump into each other? Feel free to send me a note on any of the social media platforms or directly at Vivian at VivianCarrasco.com. That would be so super exciting for me to receive a note from you. This episode is focused on reimagining or rethinking the way that we gather. So the priority, the primary conversation that's happening here is how to reimagine our identity in the world. How do we think who we are and what's happening next for me and how do I get there? And the, that's the collective me, which is you and us and all of us. What habit or practice do I need to establish or reestablish or do again over in a different way? What mindset, what pattern needs to be interrupted in my life in order for me to experience the world differently? What I haven't done a lot of is pushing the boundaries beyond that sense of identity or sense of self and getting to know ourselves better, being kind and compassionate and really becoming intimate with who we are, what we want, and who we're becoming and the ways that we get there, the methods to make that happen. So this is an exciting episode for me because it's very relevant in my life right now. We are, I can't even count on my fingers, we're way into this pandemic. You know, COVID-19 is now turning into COVID-20. And the holidays are pushing us to our limits on that because typically in November and December, we gather together with our loved ones. And it is something that we probably look forward to the entire year. And we have to do that a little bit different right now. So I was inspired come to you in the podcast by a newsletter that was sent out by Priya Parker. She wrote an essay for the New York Times, and it invited us to reimagine or to rethink how we gather. Because a lot of us are experiencing all the feels, right? There's so much change in our world, and we don't know quite where that's going to settle or how it's going to settle. And we still have to navigate through this change right now. I'm personally moving through that change in a whole bunch of different ways, in the way that, and you are too probably, right? Like teams, how do we work together when we're at home instead of seeing each other in person? And the one that's closest to my heart in the moment, because my ladies, um, my folks, and within university, we've always been online. We've never been face-to-face. So that was curated intentionally online. And some of the other communities that I have, We began online and we live online. And so there's no shift to that. But now that everything that I had in person has become online, it really sort of, it's like I tripped. (laughs) That's all. That's the only way I can think of it right now. I tripped and I'm getting back up. It's November and I'm just now getting back up. But the one that's closest to my heart is obviously my own family. How do we gather? How do we think the way that we connect to keep making meaning and getting closer. But the second one is Creative Mornings. I am honored to be the host of our local chapter here in Fort Worth. And we are, as a collective group, as a team, reimagining and rethinking how we gather in a new way. My hunch is that you're doing that in some way in your life, too. And the first thing that I want to share with you is the thing that through this pandemic has sustained me in my gatherings. One is I continue to gather as much as I can myself in nature. I am in between four walls because I am recording. And you want a clean recording, right? You might want to hear the birds and the rustling and the things that are happening outside. But my hunch is that you want to stay focused on my voice and have this experience be sort of clean, especially if you're 
listening to me in your head, in your earphones, things. So I do this for you. (laughs) I do this for you. I'd rather be outside until the sun sets and then I'm inside all night, obviously. Because if it was warm enough, I would sleep outside. But tangent, sorry. The point that I was making was, oh, what's gotten me through the pandemic? What's gotten me through the pandemic is this ritual that has emerged in our family and it's Monday night steak night. So every Monday night, David turns on the fire pit and the guys, you know, come over and we make, you know, Jacob makes the steaks. He's the grill master. We make other things and we have a steak night together and it is been the most anchoring grounding experience throughout this whole pandemic my hunch is my hope is my heart is hoping that we continue this in some way into the future even if and when any of us move away because right now we're physically located in the same space and then at the end of that dinner with each other you know breaking bread kind of thing we have an experience typically it's we play spades our family is a huge spades player. (laughs) We actually have a championship belt that is rotated around to the champion of the time. And we're a bit competitive about it, but it's how we have fun together. Sometimes we do other things depending on the season. You know, typically around October, we will carve pumpkins and we're always competitive about everything. So we'll make things and then have people vote on them and then declare a winner. That's my family. So gathering together on Monday nights has been an anchor for me. But I'm still reimagining and rethinking what that will be for Creative Mornings. If you happen to be a local creative that is a part of that community and we're connected in these two circles, let's have a conversation. I'd really love to hear from you on what you think that is. We are deep in the planning for 2021, so this is very timely. Reach out to me in whatever way makes sense to you so that we can have that conversation. But going back to Priya, Priya mentioned that what she's in her essay, she mentions that what she's seeing is typically two responses to the changes in the way that we gather. And it's this yes, no, and that people aren't really considering what the other options are. And that's what she wanted to draw our attention to. And that is the same thing that I see when we are experiencing having to make tough decisions as we transition or transform. Our only experience really is the past. The brain is like a filing system. Once we have a pattern established for something, it's really hard to erase that pattern completely and start completely over and imagine something that is different. But that's what we're doing. And that's why we do it drip by drip, you know, through embodied practices. So what I have a book in front of me, it's called Improvisation in the Theater by Keith Johnston. And he's a real legacy in the space of improv. He's an improv teacher. And in his work or his body of work, he talks about imaginative response. So improv is really something where you make an offer and that's what is called an offer. Somebody makes an offer and you just respond to it. You say yes. And, and that's what Priya invited us to do with the upcoming holidays. The quote that I pulled from her article, which I really loved is that holidays are hand-me-down tools that we mistakenly think of as precious art. And that kind of blew my mind because it is so true in so many ways about so many things. And life is a lot more like improv and the way that Keith Johnston says, we need to take an imaginative response to things. But I'm here to say that that is difficult. One experience that I share regularly is the fact that like in my house, my rooms aren't typically the rooms that you see in normal houses. Like my dining room for a very long time was completely dedicated to being a meditation space. It was primarily for prayer. And that seemed weird to my people until they got used to it. You know, we don't have, because we're, you know, my husband and I are both 100% working at home. Our other kitchen area has turned into a second office space because we have to make our living space work for us. So we're imagining it into what serves us best. So that's hard to do. But as I'm thinking through this, it's what we need to do in pretty much everything. We need to do it in the way that we dress. We need to do it in the way that we speak. We have an opportunity to be imaginative about all of our responses to life, not just gatherings, even though gatherings are super important. 
And the things that it remain constant across all of these realms, whether it's identity or meetings or outfits, is that we make it ours. We make it our own and we make it meaningful. So what I'm thinking through is how do we reinvent these things? How do we free ourselves from the tradition? How do we free ourselves from the ritual and not consider it a precious art? We can focus on the meaning of it. What is it that we want from it? And when I think about the examples that I just shared with you in the dinners that we're having together as a family once a week, in addition to sort of calming down, relaxing, connecting over a meal, we're sharing an experience together, which allows us to have conversations and share things with each other. And that's what matters most to me is that whatever gathering we're having, there's enough space for us to have conversations with each other. It's easier for me to build into my family because there's only four of us. It's harder to build into a larger community that gathers for a live audience. And so I'm rethinking that. Hmm. Priya suggests, because she's an artist at gatherings, is that we consider the purpose In Seth Godin's language, this is really asking yourself, who's it for and what's it for? Another Seth Godin-ism that I absolutely love, and this is really how I navigate through these types of change, these shifts in my world, you know, the way that I experience daily life, is he calls it buzzer management. So this is when you press the buzzer before you know the answer. As if I'm telling the story correctly, Seth Godin used to be uh, part of a team, like a quiz team, and then he became the coach because he said he wasn't good at buzzer management. And that is buzzing, saying yes, and then figuring it out. And we're doing that with Creative Mornings, Fort Worth. We're saying yes, we're planning for new events, and we're going to figure them out as they come along. So who's it for and what's it for? These are the questions. I don't have answers to this right now. This is in the moment what I'm moving through. This is my messy middle. I typically come to you with insights once I've gone through something. This is actually something in real life right now. So I'm asking myself, who's it for and what's it for? If you're applying this to your closet, to your house, to anything that you do, those are good questions to ask. You know, I want my house to serve me. I don't want my house to look like everyone else's house looks like just because culture told me there should be a dining room, even like a master dining room or whatever they call it. Formal dining. That's what it is, I guess. There's no formal dining happening in this house. So say yes and figure it out that, you know, Seth Godin's buzzer management attitude perspective and Keith Johnston's improv teaching married with Priya Parker, which is to reinvent the narrative or the script that we mistakenly think of as precious art. All of this is just swimming around in my head as something that I'm trying to figure out. When I took the very bare notes that I took for this episode, I also pulled out The Art of Possibility, which is one of my favorite books. And he actually suggests that we do a word replacement trick when we're doing this. I want blank, but I'm afraid blank is typically what our mind says. And the suggestion that Xander is making in the art of possibility is, I want blank and. So it's improv. It's yes and. It's imaginative response. And I I guess I'm saying this to myself. In the moment, in the middle of a messy middle, to give myself hope that I have what it takes to create that imaginative response and really focus in on what I want in those regatherings. As we were going through Thanksgiving, <laughs> it's interesting, I never really had the courage to do it, but the pandemic gave me a dose of courage and I said, this is probably our last year with Turkey. None of us really like it. It's never sort of all gone. There's always leftovers to the turkey, and I would much rather prefer to have asado, which is pork with red chile, as my main meal on Thanksgiving, because it's still a very special treat for me. So I can already see the way that the pandemic has opened up an imaginative response in me. 
and given me an opportunity to rewrite a script or reinvent a gathering in a way that isn't just a hand-me-down, that it becomes something that is designed and developed for exactly what I want. As you design your own new gatherings, if anything follows you outside of the pandemic and becomes a tradition, I'm hoping that it does. I'm hoping that something in your life says yes, and I recognize that it is a super tough time for all of us. The winter hasn't been easy as an experience. So today I just want to say, I think we're all in a messy middle. I think it's okay to share it, which is why I'm sharing my messy middle with you right now, and find support around it. I am actively reaching out to other Community Mornings hosts, having conversations with my family about the way that these things need to change and what matters to me. And I just invite you to do the same. I really don't have, other than an invitation to read Keith Johnston, maybe The Art of Possibility, and to Google Seth Godin Buzzer Management. In addition to Priya Parker, it's, I guess it's an episode of Resources. That's what it is. This is an episode of Resources to help you reinvent the narrative script around the holidays so that we don't mistakenly think of them as precious art and we can think of them as improv, recreate them to exactly what we want, regardless of what we're afraid of. Yes, that's what this is. This whole episode was improv because I told myself I'm coming to the microphone to just share with you where I am and not sure that I have a lot to offer you. And now that I've done it, I think there's a jewel or two in it. That's up to you to decide. I mean, you're the listener. So (sighs) being in the messy middle, it's interesting, isn't it? The thing I love about the messy middle, though, is that it's closer to the end of something and the beginning of the new thing. That I can trust. And that I know is happening. I wish you so much peace and love and joy. And I pray that you are investing time in nature, investing time in your own self and what matters to you. And I really would love to hear your thoughts around any of this. It is an active conversation that I'm having right now. I haven't figured this one out. I'm figuring it out as I go. It is my pleasure, my absolute honor to be in your ear. I hope that as you reimagine and rethink your new gatherings, they bring you all the love that you want, all the joy that you desire, and fulfill every need that you have. I really appreciate being a part of your journey. And I hope that this episode and the episodes around it help you to navigate these changes and help you to become the person that you're becoming. That's my intention. I wish you peace in all the ways. Until the next time.